Hi, good morning. This is Shivani again. And today we're going to talk about the doctrine of constitutional morality. This is one of the final doctrines of the constitutional list of doctrines under law. Now, the concept of constitutional morality is present in the constitutional scheme, which is particularly in the preamble, which is part three of the fundamental rights and part four, the directive principles of state policy. However, as pointed out by various experts, it was not debated at length on the Constituent Assembly when the Constitution was coming into force, except in the instance where Ambedkar had quoted and built upon the arguments that George of George Grote, the British classical historian and political radical. Constitutional morality is an important concept and it is one of the most important parts of the, the binding forces behind the Constitution of India. So what does constitutional morality mean? Constitutional morality in the modern sense means to abide by the substantial moral entailment that the constitution carries. However, Dr. Ambedkar in the Constituent Assembly was actually referring to methods that are adopted in policy making where the constitution is either silent or gives discretionary powers. Thus, he was referring to an approach whose essence should be unanimity of approach a process effective to mediation in cases of differences. The constitution was made possible by a constitutional morality that was very liberal at its core. Not the liberal in the uh, ideological sense, but in the deeper virtues from which it actually came into force. Now, an ability to combine with mutual regard and intellectualism with a democratic sensibility, convention with a fallibility, deliberation and decision, ambition with the commitment of institution and hope for future with due regard for the present, past and future. These are the words that Dr. Ambedkar had quoted when he wanted constitutional morality to come into force during the time of the constituent assembly debate. In practice, actually, the constitutional morality is evident in various established rights which emanate from the constitution. Some of those rights include the rule of law, the individual liberty, right to equality, freedom of speech and expression, social justice, due process of law, procedure established by law, so on and so forth. The society obviously does not remain static. The changes that occur lead to new scenarios and thus the law that constitutional setup have to keep up with the same. This aspect can be clearly understood through various judicial pronouncements such as the Navdeh Singh Johar versus Union of India, where the Supreme Court provided an elaborate mechanism to offer the rights of people who do not come from a particular gender, thus ensuring their life and liberty, dignity and identity. In this Pride Month, it is important to notice that constitutional morality first came into being through this judgment, which was Navdeh Singh Johar versus Union of India. There are many other law landmark judgments, but let us keep this one in mind. What are the main themes of doctrine of constitutional morality? The central theme of constitutional morality are freedom and self-restraint. In the smooth functioning of the constitutional process, self-restraint is already a precondition for freedom. So part four of the Constitution of India, which is the directive principles of state policy, it acts as a reservoir for the social welfare in the constitution. However, when there, is a, there arises a um, dispute or what do we say, conflict in terms of part four, that is the right of principles of state policy and part three, which is the fundamental rights. The Supreme Court, while asserting these uh, and solving these uh, disputes, had come through pronoun various pronouncements and emphasized that harmonious construction of the two is a part of the constitutional morality. We have already learned about what harmonious construction actually means. So, one of the most important cases that comes into being is the Minerva Mint case. The trend of populism is growing in the world, and of course, India is no different. Laws in the parliament in the recent past are being passed without proper debate or even careful analyzation or the treatment that they like. For instance, the abrogated, abrogation of Article 317 in 2019 was one one of those laws where the law was passed without proper debate or deliberation, where the parliament had acted in haste. Irrespective of the constitutional validity of the said move, 
The procedural treatment of such important and sensitive provision does not bode well or as far as the doctrine of constitutional morality is concerned. Therefore, the India as a federal policy in which the state and the center both work in consonance with the constitution and such a state is no way to subordinate to the central government. Therefore, many other worms that have come into being have also been a part of it. This is just one instance and definitely a deliberative viewpoint from various judges, judiciaries, and other uh, people who have been part of the constitutional debate. What is the scope of this constitutional morality? Now, the extent and scope of constitutional morality have not actually been defined anywhere. Neither has the Supreme Court worked on to clearly determine what exactly the scope of article, uh, uh, the scope of constitutional morality mean over here which leaves open to subjective interpretation of the judges. Many critics have argued that the constitutional morality is another chapter that the judiciary is yet to go into. And yet to, and therefore, constitutional morality infringes, might, may or may not infringe the powers of the uh, parliament. This in turn violates the essential principle of separation of powers by imposing judicial supremacy over parliamentary supremacy. Therefore, the overreach of judges fits constitutional morality against the social morality. So there are many other things that one has to take in consideration, especially the Indian judiciary, while considering what exactly falls under the ambit of constitutional morality. Constitutional morality basically means adherence or being faithful to the bottom line principles of constitutional values. It includes commitment to inclusive and democratic process in which both individuals and collective interests of the uh, general public in, in total are satisfied. So constitutional morality today in this sense is no more less dangerous than the basic structure doctrine itself. In articulation, construct, uh, constitutional morality is vague and is dependent upon the interpretation of each judge out there. In conclusion, we can state that the constitution which embodies the will of the people is not the end of itself. Rather, we can say that it is a means to achieve justice. Justice in terms of social, economic, and political, as it is mentioned in the preamble of India, in the preamble of the constitution. The constitution safeguards all the avenues that are needed to achieve the ends of justice. And if the constitution itself fails to follow such endeavor, it will attribute not to the constitution, but human beings who are tasked with safeguarding and implementing this. Therefore, the concept of constitutional morality is not needed to be determined by the Supreme Court, particularly at times of unprecedented uh, times, such as the pandemic in itself can bring about a lot of changes that the constitutional morality can take subject to or take note to. There are different branches of the government at different levels which are courted. An intervention of the court at each level is not necessary because it may lead to the judicial overreach and thus thereby diluting the power separation of powers. But an important concept, but where the doc wherever the constitutional morality falls back or is being violated, of course it becomes the right of the judiciary and the duty of the judiciary to take notice of such a law so that the duties of a welfare state are fulfilled in its truest sense. Thank you so much.